Welcome to another Onshape video tutorial for Bryanston School. This is the first extension task to the Bluetooth speaker models that we created in some previous video tutorials. Uh, if you follow all five of the extension task videos, it will allow you to complete an assembly of your chosen speaker case with some model speakers fitted to it. Uh, you can see that I've already opened up the software in my browser and you can see that I've got all of the different models here. Uh, the process that we're going to go through is perhaps slightly more complicated for the figure 8 speaker, the small oval speaker and the oval speaker uh, just because the speaker holes are not lined up with the origin. So I'm going to pick one of those to take you through the process. But if you are doing the domed speaker or the cube speaker or the cylinder speaker, uh, I'll talk you through the differences of what you need to be doing. So I'm going to pick the oval speaker. So while that's just lo loading up, you can see the model that we've created previously. I'm going to hover the mouse over the front surface and I'm going to right click and left click on new sketch. I'm then going to press the N key for normal two so that we're looking flat onto that surface because it makes it easier to draw on a flat surface than it does if the, uh, the model's in uh, an isometric projection. Now, if you're doing the domed or the cylinder or the cube speaker, when you're looking at this, the speaker hole will be around the origin. So you can miss out this first step. But what I'm going to do is to put in some lines that will help me to mirror the hole that I'm going to create uh, for the screws to go in that will allow the, the speakers to be screwed to the casing. So I'm going to pick the line tool and I'm going to pick this tool here, which means that I can take the the line that I draw and instead of it being a solid line and make it part of the sketch feature uh, it will be a dotted line or a center line so I'm going to hover around the middle of the speaker and you can see the speaker hole and you can see that it's uh, picked out the center I'm going to left click to place the line and I'm just going to come off to the left out the way making sure that that line stays horizontal you can see the little indicator underneath uh, the cursor to show that it's a horizontal line and I'm going to click again now we'll try to add another line to stop that I'm just going to press the escape key and then I'm going to repeat that process with a vertical line so I'm going to pick the line and then pick the construction tool and I'm going to hover over the center and the end of that line and actually if I hold the left mouse button down to drag out the line again making sure this time it's vertical uh, looking at the little icon to the bottom right of the cursor but if I drag that line out without letting go of the mouse button or clicking uh, and then release the mouse button you'll see that it doesn't try and do a multi-line so I don't have to press the escape key this time now these lines here are simply to allow me when I draw the hole um, for the screw to go through uh, if I had um, a speaker hole that was around the origin, I could just use these work plane edges to mirror. Uh, because I haven't got that, I'm going to use these construction lines. I could have used the top work plane to mirror top to bottom if I wanted, but I wanted to just show you and remind you about the different ways in which we can draw lines. Uh, so now I'm going to pick the center circle tool. Now remember, lots of these drawing tools have different options hidden underneath. This is the default tool and I need to make sure that I turn the construction line off and I'm just going to hover out the way over here it doesn't really matter where where I draw this circle but I'm just going to make sure that it's not going to snap to another line so I'm going to draw it off the face and I'm just going to drag out a nice big clear circle and then I'm going to dimension it so I'm going to use the dimension tool firstly I'm going to dimension the size of the circle so left click on the edge of the circle left click out the way and then using the keyboard I'm just going to press the four key to make that a four millimeter hole and you can see that the circle uh, has come over here because of the sort of the relative size that's fine that doesn't matter I'm going to now use the the dimension tool again to go from my vertical dotted line to the center of the circle and I just come up to the top and click and I'm going to change that to 26 millimeters so 26 on the keyboard and I'm going to do the same from this horizontal line or I could actually do it from the work plane it will be the same thing again to making sure I'm going to the center of the circle come over to the side so it's out of the way left click to place the dimension and then type in two and six for 26 millimeters and hit return so that's the position of the hole that I need to fix the speakers uh, to my model 
but I need uh, four holes around uh, this aperture here. So I'm going to use the mirror tool to create those. So I'm going to click on the mirror tool and I'm going to use the mirror line of my vertical line and then I'm going to select the entity of the circle. And you can see it's put another one there. I'm going to turn the mirror tool off, turn it back on again. This time pick the top work plane or my other line. This time I'm going to pick both of those circles and bring that down underneath. Now if you're doing the cube or the dome or the cylinder or you're doing um, the eccentric design that's got one speaker facing forwards and one speaker facing backwards, that's uh, all you need to do. You can move on to the next step. But because I've got two speakers next to each other, I also want a set of four holes around this circle. And because this has been done symmetric, I can mirror those four circles again. So select the mirror tool to turn it off. Select it again so I can select a new mirror line. This time I'm going to pick the right uh, work plane edge and then I'm going to pick all four of those circles. So I'm just going to hold the right mouse button down to spin that around so you can see what I've created. Uh, now I'm happy with that so I'm now going to extrude cut these uh, four holes around each bigger hole, so eight in total. So I'm going to click on the extrude tool and I'm going to select remove. And you can see that it's defaulted in uh, going backwards now because I've, it understands I want to take material away from that face. Now the distance is set to 25 millimeters. That will do because it's not going to go all the way through. Um, I know from previous tutorials that that's six millimeters thick, but actually I can left click and I can just uh, select up to next if I just want to make sure that I'm going to go through that material thickness. Left click and we can see that we've got those holes. Now the next thing I need to do is to create the countersink because we're using countersunk screws. So I'm going to use the chamfer tool. So this is a feature that doesn't require a sketch. It's a feature that's applied to the model directly. This is the chamfer tool. Now chamfer is basically an angled cut. The default of this is uh, equal distance, so it's a 45 degree angle, and I want that to be two millimeters. So I can select the distance up here. So left click on it and select two. Uh, mine was already on two millimeters. Yours might be on a different number. Just using the scroll wheel to zoom in, and I'm just going to pick the front edge of each of the holes that I've just created. So I'm just using the scroll wheel to allow me to move in a bit better, a bit more clearly, make sure I pick those edges up. And there we go. So they're all chamfered, so I can left click on the tick. And that's it. That's all I wanted to do. So I've added the holes in for each of the speakers and they've been countersunk. Now, if I've got a uh, model which has got holes at the back, I can then just mirror those from the uh, over the front work plane. So I could use the mirror feature. Chain, so I'll, I'll show you what to do. Go to the mirror feature, change that from part mirror to feature mirror and then I can pick uh, those uh, features that I want to mirror. So in this instance, I'll just put them in the model and then I'll delete them. So I want to mirror extrude for and chamfer and then pick the mirror plane as the front plane. And that should put those uh, in the back. Now, sometimes for chamfers, it doesn't always like uh, mirroring the chamfer. Uh, so if that's the case, I might have to add that on that afterwards. So if I just click the tick to do that, um, you can see it's added holes in the back. Now, I don't need those, but that's the process that you'll need to go through if doing uh, something like the domed or the cylinder speaker. Uh, so I'm just going to right click on the mirror feature over here and then left click on delete. So it takes those off. And if I right click and go isometric, we can see the model in isometric. So that's our case prepared now to add on the speakers later on. Join me in the next tutorial and we'll go through creating the screws and the nuts that we'll use to fasten the speakers to the casing. Thanks for watching.